everything going on in this tent, and for that matter, everything you've ever seen with your eyes, heard with your ears, touched with your fingers, in your life, we understand the laws of physics that govern what those things are. This is what we call the core theory in physics. It's the standard model of particle physics plus Einstein's general relativity. You may have heard that gravity, which general relativity describes, does not play well with quantum mechanics. We don't have a quantum theory of gravity. And that's true, but we have a pretty good quantum theory of gravity. What we don't have is the final quantum theory of gravity. We can't explain the Big Bang or black holes, but if you want to ex explain why raindrops fall down rather than up, you can explain that in both quantum and gravitational terms right now. So everything that you've ever seen or touched, we have a theory that explains that. Of course, we don't understand dark matter, dark energy, the origin of the universe, and we certainly don't understand how these individual bits and pieces come together to make things like chemicals, or aardvarks, or financial systems, and so forth, okay? Complex phenomena that are beyond the laws of fundamental physics, we certainly have a lot to do in understanding them, but whatever that work will eventually be, it better be compatible with the fundamental laws of physics. I don't understand how the human brain works in any great detail, but I know the brain is made of atoms. So if I'm going to come up with a theory of how the brain works, it better be compatible with the known laws of physics. Now, I know what, I know what you're thinking. I would only believe it if they showed me the underlying equations. <laughs> You've come to the right place. Here you go. The good news is it's only one equation, OK? In Isaac Newton's time, it was F equals MA, Newton's second law, forces mass times acceleration. If you were Laplace's demon in a classical world, so someone gave you the billiard balls, the laws of physics you would have in your brain were Newton's laws, and you would know how the billiard balls bumped into each other. If you are a modern quantum mechanical Laplace's demon using the core theory to do your predictions, this is the equation you would use. And basically, this is the equation that plays the role of Newton's second law. This is the answer to the question, if you give me the state of the universe now, what will it be a moment from now? What would I predict would come next? Now, that's not remarkable. I mean, this is remarkable. This is an enormous amount of effort that goes into this one little tiny uh, expression right here. The remarkable thing is that I'm saying that it's not that there's nothing missing. It's not that we're done in any sense. But if there is anything missing, which there almost certainly is, if there are new laws of physics, new fields and particles we haven't yet discovered, they don't affect our everyday lives. They don't affect what is happening in this room right now. There is dark matter, for example. Very probably, there are dark matter particles streaming through this room. When I say very probably, that's because these dark matter particles must be very, very hard to detect. Otherwise, we would have detected them by now. We've been looking for them. Any new kind of stuff that is not subsumed in this equation is hard to detect and therefore can't have an enormous impact on what is going on in our bodies, in our brains, in the floor, in the rain, et cetera.